Hello and welcome back to Creating Compiler Creating a Compiler from Scratch, recreationally. I'm going to struggle with that for forever, apparently. I think this is going to be a longer episode. I might have to do this across sessions and make this longer than an hour. I've been trying to keep them 45 to an hour, but maybe I do like two-hour episodes every now and then. Or maybe I start uploading less frequently and combine two different parts together. I don't know. We'll see how it works. Leave a comment if you have a preference, if you like the shorter shorter 45 to an hour that's fine if you're going to end up liking longer videos you want to watch more maybe have them uploaded less frequently so i can do more in an episode tell me tell me what the hell you want because i don't know what i want cool i scaffolded just a tiny little bit here in lexer read next token to prepare for doing preprocessor directives and all that was is the flag for is at start of line we already have tracked and if we're at a um, a hash, a pound, or whatever the heck, before we read an actual token, if we're at the start of the line and we see that, then we're at a preprocessor directive. So we're going to do that first, and then only after handling the preprocessor directive do we go get the next token. And we're going to have to factor out uh, keyword handling in the current system, which I put in there just to show that we have it, and move it to after we preprocess. Because a macro, for example, can redefine one of those keywords. It shouldn't. That's bad. But it can. Um, so we have to handle that after we do macro expansion. Right. So we're going to just start parsing directives and do nothing with them, probably. Very little with them other than parse them correctly, I guess. Um, and we'll, yeah, we'll go from there. I've already set up a little function that can start delegating to things. And so we're going to go find our identifier here where we can move our keyword stuff and just say if out token kind is equal to YSC CTK ident, then handle, oh, handle identifiers. So it becomes a keyword. Cool. That looks up a keyword. I don't hate that. We'll do this for more keywords later. And that's all we have to do here, I believe. I'm going to go again. I started writing a C lexer like a week ago before this started. So I'm going to go reference what I did here to make sure I'm not missing anything. Because I put a lot of thought to it. So in our handle preprocess directive, we need a couple things. We're going to set a flag that says we're in a preprocessor, which I've also added to the lexer, is in preprocessor. Because we want to start handling some tokens a little bit differently, and we'll have to go add that before I forget as well. There is one new token we need to do, and I'm going to put it right at the top. It is the new line token. Then here, we need to assert, I believe. I don't think there's any way we can get here without being in the preprocessor. So assert lexer is in preprocessor. And then we can basically do exactly this. Uh, the new line will be a token kind. And we're going to go make sure that we have, um, we don't have all of them defined here. We're going to want to define a lot of our single ones as names, so I won't do it now. But the new line character will be a token. Uh, Lexer advance. Do I handle it differently here is actually a good question. I forget the semantics of my parsing a new line. I think we're fine. It becomes an end of line. Cool. So then, all the way the heck back down here, let's do some asserts. Um, let's assert that we are not in a preprocessor in the first place, so that we know that we are the ones enabling the preprocessor state. And then we can assert that we got here on the correct information. So we'll assert that this statement is true. Then we can get the skip the the thing. So advance um, the lexer allowing comments. Then we need to read a token and see what it is. And I've already done some like quote unquote research on testing some like here's a bunch of different ways that you can break the compiler kind of deal. And right now I have a lot of these extensions disabled, so I'll probably get some different error messages, but I'm going to base them on what I got last week. So one of the first things we're going to do is read it and determine what kind of token it is. So we have a YACC token token. We'll just call it token. And we want to read, no preprocess, 
from the Lexer into that token. Then we can switch on a token kind, not arrow, dot kind, token dot kind. And in the default case, we have some bad stuff. And we're going to use this invalid preprocessing directive. This will be most of our error messages. We're going to have to go copy an error message out of here because we've ruined our lives. And this one that we handled is an invalid preprocessing directive. We need a start location. Let's make a YSC. That's after the advance. I see location start location is lexer get location lexer okay something we can report errors against that's going to be the location of this token though so I can call this um, token location instead right and we want to skip to the end of this preprocessing directive because it just errored we don't care about what's on the rest of the line so let's also write that utility function static void lycc lexer skip to end of directive. That's already long enough. We'll do that. Give it a nice hard elixir here. And we want to basically just go until we hit the new line token that we just added. So that's going to, let's make sure that we are in the preprocessor state so that we can get that new line token. And then while not lexer at elf lexer, because we want to stop if we hit the end of file instead of just infinitely looping, and our Do we want to take the token? I think we want to take the token. Lexer C token. Lia C C token. What am I doing? Token. We're going to take a copy of this token and pass it in here. Uh, we haven't written the function yet, so it's fine. And token kind does not equal the um, this new line. Then we want to read no preprocess uh, from Lexer into token. So then as soon as we read in the new line token, we'll be done with the preprocessor and we can just stop, right? So then we can take this, put it after our error, lexer token, copy the token because we don't actually want to do anything funky with it. And then, do I want to do anything else with this error? No, I think we're just done. Then we want to, I'm gonna go ahead and, before I forget, assert that we are in here and then disable it. We are done doing preprocessor shenanigans. That's it. So in case of an identifier, case um, ctk ident, here's where we want to check if it's a valid preprocessing directive, which it might not be. There are lots of identifiers that aren't valid. Um, interesting. There's a bug in my other one. I'm glad I'm doing this from scratch. Haha. -ha. If um, so now we need to be able to stir and comp, stir and compare, which we do have. We don't have a utility function for this just yet. We're still using the standard library. We want to compare token string value dot data to define. Define is going to be the first one that we do because we don't have to actually look up files or parse a new string type, which is not going to be hard. We'll probably factor strings out into a new function and just give it a new delimiter as well as a flag of whether or not we can include comments. I need to go look that up again. Um, and we want to say token. So here's where I want to length. This might be a problem. If our string value is really long, I think we're going to hit. But this is null terminated, right? So stir n comp. We don't have docs for in line because I defined it. I didn't check this in the keyword section either, and it didn't break. So I assume that it'll stop at the null terminator here. So we're just going to call that good. If we hit define, then we want to handle, um, we're going to call it a define directive for the lexer here. And I don't think I need to pass anything into that. No. Else, we're going to go to that invalid preprocessing directive that we set up earlier, and it's going to be the same error message, invalid preprocessing directive. So now we've wrapped up define. Let's go ahead and do the exact same thing for include. We'll do it second. But we'll go ahead and get the function in there and say include directive. So then let's just move some things up here. I'm going to copy this a handful of times, and we're going to replace the first one with define and the second with include. 
me uh, make sure everything is still on, because I forgot if I turned off my mic again. We look good. Um, by default, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to say um, read token and skip, so that if we hit them, we don't get a bunch of errors. And I'm going to make sure that what we've done here works. We shouldn't see tokens for any of the pre-processing lines now, but we should still see tokens for everything else. So we're going to use our uh, little test hello C here. We're going to say include hello.h, and we're going to say define test 10, 20, 30, or ASDF or something, right? So we should hit include and define, and just immediately skip them until the end of the line. So we should still only get the five, six tokens for int main, blah, blah, blah. So let's go build on test hello. Got some warnings and something else. Just the warnings, I guess. And invalid character in source text. Assert fail. Next recurring. Okay, so we broke something. Let's go check. Long, long, we need an unsigned long, long go. Uh, back to the lexer, and we'll make that check here. Unsigned long, long, we don't like having warnings like that. So, one one is still an invalid character in source text. So, we are not hitting this properly. Wow. Is it not set up properly to set us to is start of file? Is it start of line is true? When we advance here, this should give us Oh, you know what? I think I'm handling the new line flag wrong, that's all. So when we hit advance here, it's going to read the next character, and the next character is not going to be a white space. So, oh, it is, it's just a zero. So is space, we need to also handle is zero. And lexer current character not equal to zero. That might do it. Invalid character in source on line two. Well, we got past the first line, but now there's something else going on. And this is service failing, so let me go look at that as well. Um, lexer current car location is less than lexer cur. So it's failing in here to advance the character anywhere, which is weird. This is where I'd love to have a debugger, but my environment makes it difficult. If we're at the end of file, oh, that's one thing. If we're here, that makes sense. So at the, for these returns, there's a good chance that nothing happened, but this will. So if this hits, then that's going to trigger the assert. But we should be on line three by that point, not line two. Then other returns here. This will definitely have moved. This will definitely have moved. And this will definitely have moved. So why are we getting that read next character? Let's say... If we are in advance, let's just say if is elf at elf lexer to just return. Right, we've already not done anything. And if we're at elf, let's just also assert that the current character is zero. And then return. Just see if that changes our error message at all. Lexer current character is okay. Even weirder, we hit is at EOF. And whenever we hit the EOF, it didn't return zero. If it's at the end of file, return zero. If it's at the end of file, return zero. So this first one makes a little less sense, but What the heck? <laughs> I 
let's... So does this just happen? Assert fail. So that just fails straight up on a regular old file. Uh, let's just give it the keyword int. And it works. Okay, so I guess it has to do with us handling the new line in a preprocessor. But why? If I just throw a hash in there, mics or fail. Okay. But if I int here, it still fails. Int here, it still fails. But int here, no failure. Throw a define in there. So that's going to fail 100%. Um, I need, real quick, to figure out what the hell is going on. I was going to do something else, but it's not going to help because we know where it's failing. It's failing at the assert. So why is there a problem? Okay, because is at EOF is not what we want it to be, okay. Um, oh, because we're, okay. We have some semantic issues with the way that we're handling things then. What we need to be doing, Lexer is at EOF, should return that the current character is equal to zero. And since we want to advance, we're going to do this regardless. So then in here, we want to say instead, if we need like a macro for this, um, define uh, lexer past elf, let's say. Uh, we'll take in the lexer l. And then we want to return what we just removed. L um cur is greater or equal to l end. So then we can replace all instances here of lexer at EOF with lexer past EOF. Because again we're implementing implementing um, advance so we can't have the same semantics for at EOF as we can with advance I don't think that's gonna fix the problem but does that at least not make it worse lexer current location is less than lexer current that's different I'll give you that uh, if I go back to hello and I just say int again does at least int work it fails for everything we've made it worse so current character location is less than lexer current Current car location less than lexer cur. Assert the current character location is less than cur. How are we getting there? So if we hit this, I guess that's a case. So how about um, if Lexer current character, actually. Let's just uh, grab the first part here. I don't know why I like copy pasting. Is not equal to zero, then hit the assert, I guess. That gives us invalid character in source. Why? It's just a zero. So. Let's just see if that's the case then. If, well, don't we have an if and a file somewhere? We don't here. Uh, let's eat white space and then if at EOF lexer just return and leave it at invalid. Because so we don't need to be eating the, oh my god, access violation exception, unknown address one. 
We're having a great time. Summary, access violation, and get line from source. Are we not initializing this correctly? I thought it should be zero. Oh, it's, you know what? There is a place where we're not zero initializing them because I'm stupid. It's here and somewhere else here and here. Okay, so then all the way at the top, I'm pretty sure we're already doing this part, right? We are zero initializing this token. Does that get rid of the the bad? No, it doesn't. It's still at zero one. What the heck? Um, better question. I guess not question. Rather than return, let's set out token kind equal to CTK EOF. Make sure it's at least a valid kind. So is that all it's checking for? Because if we're trying to print an invalid character, an invalid thing, that makes sense. So let me go check that as well. In our, did we put that in context or somewhere else? I think we wanted that to be in source. Location print, no. We wanted that to be in token, that's right. So if we call token print, it's going to be doing something like this. But really, we don't want to do that, because there is no source image. Um, this whole thing is a nightmare, basically. If token.kind is equal to invalid, else we'll get the image. But in this case, we have nothing to print. So we're just going to say the kind name. Right? That isn't going to change much but hopefully that'll give us a better indication in the future. So there's our int. Now, if I go back to hello, can I define before int and still just get int? No, it doesn't like that. There wasn't a seg fault explicitly, but it still doesn't like that. Do we get two ints? No, we don't get anything. Uh-oh. Told you the preprocessor was going to be a pain in the butt. Int main. Let's get our int main back. Make sure that int main still processes properly. It does. If I just put a hash there, it fails immediately. If I do int and then this, we get an int. So it just immediately eats the rest of the file. So let's define test. Go back to the lexer. Then. I thought these asserts would catch some nice problems. But it doesn't. Oh, I'm not. That didn't fix it, but that is a problem. Yeah, I didn't fix it. Um. Yeah, fall through is not a good default, but that doesn't fix our problem. Then, so, so, then, then, so. Well, we're not at the end of the file, and token kind is not equal to this. So instead of checking end of file, maybe I say token kind is not equal to TK EOF. TTK EOF. There, I don't know why I didn't find that. If I do that, it doesn't change anything, but I just want to see. So read token, no preprocess of token. That token kind is not equal to this, and it's not equal to this. Continue. If I say while it's also not equal to an identifier? Does this just eat the next thing? Is that our problem? Because that looks right. 
We don't even hit the invalid preprocessing directive. It just fails, actually. So that's worth checking. Um, when we read a token without the preprocessor, we expect something to happen here. If I just, OK, test here. If I, no matter what, write an error, and then I go back to hello, there's extra tokens in here that it can totally skip past. So for testing purposes, I'm going to try to see int main twice. And error invalid preprocessing directive. So we are getting that far. We're seeing int main twice. And 2, 2 is right here. That's 2, 2. So define is in an invalid preprocessing directive, which is fine. But there's still a bug in how we're skipping past it. Why is the elixir skip to end of directive? Let's throw in a print on whatever token we're getting. So let's print. Uh, well, we have actually, I'm still going to need to print that for a new line. But we have a um, token print uh, context of token. So elixir context token. And we're going to just do that here as well. And we can throw in one more here to say that we are in this. And we can see what tokens it comes up with. Didn't want it to be full screen, but it might not hurt. So when we hit skip to end of directive, we see define, we see test, but we're not seeing the new line. So that's all that's happening is we're not seeing the new line. <sighs> Why not? we go to, to, oh, you know what? We need to skip white space. That's what's going on. So when we skip white space, white space, eat white space, um, it needs to handle if lexer in preprocessor and the current character is a new line, then we break. Oh my god, I forgot we didn't check that. Int main twice. Okay, go back to hello.c. We're gonna define test and um, include test.h. We can even call it hello.h for some semblance of consistency. So we can define test and we're gonna do a define. Uh, test can be 69. And we can say test of a is, I don't know, not equal to, what am I doing? We can say like a, a block or a parenthesized thing of a plus 35. And then we can do a define, no, this is going to have to be test 1, test 2, and test 3 of a, b, c. Let's say a plus b times c. So that gives us a lot of cases. We're also going to say include. Uh, standard I.O. So we can test that in a second, but these should all still work. We're just going to get invalid C token. Interesting. What? What? Why not? Lexer. We've still got that thing in place that skips all of our preprocessors. All of the preprocessors should be skipped at all times. So what is going on? We just fixed this. Skip to end of directive. Oh, there's a bunch going on here. OK, I missed some of it. Built liases. We're skipping include to the end. But it's saying invalid processor. That's fine. Invalid character in source text, though is happening. So we're still not handling beginning a line correctly. The new line is printing funny. That's the only thing going on there. So we've consumed the new line at that point. So we're skipping every preprocessing directive because it's just it's just wrong. 
So that's why it's giving us all these invalid tokens. So despite... Hmm, Okay, so we've still got a problem with the new line handler. And I don't know if that means something in our lexer at the top here is a problem, because like we're not doing anything special to this. We know it exists, and that's about it. So if we go back to our read implementation, all the way down here, if our current character is a new line and we advance past it, it just sets it to the start of the line which should always just be true, even if we're in a preprocessor. We're not past the end of file. Skip backslash new line. Might, it's not. Mm -hmm. Then we just return the next character. Let me go to the top of the lexer here. I want to throw in once we do this, I want to assert lexer at start of line. Does that trigger? That never triggers. We're never at the start of the line there. So I mean, like, that's clearly the case here back on screen for you guys. Like, we're not hitting any asserts. At start of line is true then. But I thought it would be false, and that's why we're getting an invalid character. Um, printf after new line current car equals um, current character mod c of it's going to get promoted to int anyway we don't have to cast after new line current character is i for int it's a hash right here it's a hash right here so it's a hash every time so when we read here Are we eating it? Is it just getting eaten? We're printing out everything that we're getting, and we're not get, like it's not being explicitly eaten by by this stuff here, because we're only actually seeing define test one sixty nine, not the hash. This is after we lex the new line in return, because we're not even printing the new line because it's being consumed last. Although I guess we are printing it. It's here. That's how we know. So then, hold on. Let me just remove all of this printing then, because we know it's technically working. It's not, something's wrong, but it's technically working. Let's assert app start of line. That assert doesn't hit. So it is at the start of the line at the end of skip to end of directive. This sets is in preprocessor to false. We're not even going to hit either of these because we're skipping them. So then when we come back up to here, we're returning the token. The next time we call into this, we're going to eat any white space, which should be no white space. And then we should be at the start of a line. What the heck? And current character should be this. Because this returns, it's not an identifier. We don't map it to anything. We go back to the top. So all the way up here, if it's EOF, we break. Otherwise, we append it. If it's not at EOF, then we read. I might just turn this into a, um, an infinite loop, because it's going to break eventually. Doesn't change anything. 
Starts off zero initialized invalid token. Um, I'm going to pause and figure this out because I'm uh, stumped. I might have to come back to this later. All right, I think I have figured out that issue. It was a difference between an if and a while, basically. If we go look at our lexer here, all I changed is way the heck down here. Instead of if we're at the start of a line and there's a thing, just while we're at the start of a line and there's a thing. Because what it was trying to do is it was trying to read the next token, but we were at another preprocessor start, which makes sense. So um, what we're going to do is probably eat white space right here as well, just to make sure that it works across multiple lines properly and that this doesn't break. But there we go. So we've got invalid preprocessing directives, but we still got all the tokens correctly and we're not getting splooshy, splooshy, splashy, splashies. I can make this bigger. I never even tried. Oh my god, you guys are going to love me for that. So that fixes that bug. That was, it's a couple hours later. It was only like 20 minutes of debugging, but I had a lot of other work to do. So I'm a little stressed. We're going to wind down with some preprocessor bugs, I guess. So now we can come back to here, not make all of these invalid. They should show up as valid, and we're just going to skip them. So boom, we're not seeing anything here now, which is great. That's exactly what we want to see. So now we need to start implementing. All of that was just to get a line not doing anything. We haven't even started implementing the define directive or the include directive. So we're going to start with define. And again, I've implemented define. I haven't done include before, so I'm not going to be glancing at the other screen for include. But the last thing that I've done in a CLEXer is a define directive. So I'm going to reference that just in case I was smart. So we are going to do some assertions because we like asserting things. We must be in a preprocessor. For all of these, I should really be asserting that the lexer is not null. We'll start, you know, littering that around places just to make sure that we're not stupid. So we are in the preprocessor. We want to then, we know we're already at a defined token. So um, we want to take in the token that started the define so we can use it for error locations and stuff. So let's take an ICC token, token. Then we can throw one more assert that lexer, um, no, not lexer, that uh, the token kind is equal to an identifier and its text is defined. Oh, we're gonna have to write a fucking um, ctk ident and token kind. This is where I'd love to have like a string view wrapper utility here. Because if I go up here and I like stir compare, we can get a stir compare from down here. That's what we're looking at. We want to just assert that this whole thing is true, basically. So I'm going to put that on a second line here. We want to say token string value data is defined. We're just going to assert that that's the case. Uh, and we can do the exact same thing for include. And we can take in the token. So we'll go ahead and get the call sites updated, and then we can start writing this code. This needs the token that we have previously used so that we can do stuff to it. Let's go. So then the next thing we want to do, again, I'm referencing this because I started trying to make it standards compliant and I don't have the standards in my head. So this is a good remember for me, a good way for me to remember that I'm doing things correctly without referencing the standard and stuff right now. We'll get to referencing the standard when it's stuff I haven't done before, but I have done this before and I think I did it right. So we need to read the next token, which we can do exactly the same thing. We can do exactly what we did down here. We can read it into this token. We're going to say YSE, um, location, start location is token dot location. So we don't need the rest of the token. We just need where it started at. So we don't have to redefine token anywhere. We can start. Um, Let's just skip to end of directive. That'll be our error case. We're just going to leave that line around. So start location, blah, blah, blah. Hit this thing. If it's the end of line or um, not an identifier, we have two different errors to handle here. So if token kind is equal to CTK EOF, that's one error. Then if it's not uh, an identifier, that's another error. Both of these 
need to make sure we're at the end of the file. EOF already does that. This one does not. So EOF can just return. Let's go grab another error here. So we're going to write the error prolog. The message that I got for this one was macro name missing. And the error that I got for this one was invalid macro name. Macro name must be an identifier. Okay. I'll go ahead and separate those so we know that they're errors. So those are our first two cases. Then we want to, just because, uh, assert that the token kind is equal to CTK ident. Just to make sure our previous checks worked correctly, we are at an identifier. The next error case is if it's not, um, the next error case is actually going to be while parsing. So we can go ahead and grab the macro name here as the token text. So token dot string value is a string view. So I see string string view uh, macro name. So we've got a macro name. Beautiful. We love macro names. Then we want to read another. No, we don't want to read another token yet because we need to check for. Um, I can illustrate this. If we have define test, we could just start reading tokens, and they can be whatever tokens we want them to be. But if the immediate next character is an open parentheses, we want to parse an argument list. So we can't use advance because there could be spaces or comments between the two. We have to check immediately that the next character is a thing. I think my previous one, read token no process is what we did to get that. So this gives us the text. So then yes, that puts us at a position. The semantics of having a complicated uh, uh, advance read took what a read character function are making me think again because I think I did it wrong in my previous one I never got to fully testing it so we've read the next token it's an identifier we don't want to call advance we don't want to call read we want to see if something if I guess this is a good place for us to move this um, we have it defined down here for lex or pass DOL. We're going to need it probably for. I'm in the wrong directive. <laughs> Let me uh, move this. All of this is in the wrong spot. It needs to go here. I'm going to include this here so that it still doesn't fail. Uh, so we need to do something. If we are past the end of file for Lexer then we need to report an error, basically. No, we don't. We can just return. There's no... It's a regular macro, and there's nothing left here. So if we're past it, or... Not even or. And we don't even have to store it yet. We will have to store it eventually, so I should probably... Um, caveat this with like a um, store macro in translation unit thing. So instead of return, we can go to this. Again, I'm not afraid of go to. I love me a good go to. So something else we're going to want here is a vector for two different things. We want a vector of tokens, YSC C token. And this vector will be our um, macro body. Zero initialize that. The other one is string view, which could be tokens so that we can report on them actually. But we don't really need to report on them. We need to report on the call side. So let's just make them the YSC string view macro args. And we also need to have a bool for if there are arguments to find at all because just a, a argument count of zero doesn't really matter. So I think you can still do define test ASDF like that, right? And this is not an error, but it has no parameters. No, yeah, I'm going to call these parameters because that's what they are, is parameters. Then we need a bool um, macro has args, which is false by default. 
and this means we have all valid data for if we need to skip to the next translation unit, or skip to the end and just store it, because we're at the end of a file. Otherwise, it should be safe to say, let's say, assert here, lexer uh, current is less than lexer end. That's basically what we're checking here. If that's the case, we can then say if lexer current is equal to an open thing, open parentheses here, then we need to get a macro parameter list. So now that we're there, we can call advanced safely because we don't care about comments anywhere else. Um, so lexer advance, uh, lexer true to uh, skip the open paren just to be, um, and we can mark that it has arguments. Macro has parameters, I guess. Because we've called them macro parameters. They're not arguments till we need to invoke. The macro now has parameters. Cool. We're going to skip parsing anything for right now. What? Did I not even handle that correctly? Oh, I didn't even finish handling that. This would totally not have worked. Anyway, so what we need to do then is if the current token... Um, so we're going to be reading probably just into the same token that we got up here. So somewhere down here, right, we've advanced... We don't need to advance even. We do, we do need to advance to go past here. So maybe instead of advancing, we just um, lexer per plus plus skip just the open paren. Then we can read token, no preprocess, lexer into token. And then we can do a check if the token kind is not equal to a close paren then we're going to have another error case where we can do yoink all this. So this one, I don't, I think I just want to say expected macro, uh, expected that in macro parameter list, and then it'll return. That's an error. The start location is fine. Okay. So then at the very end here, we want to grab a list of all the tokens. And the way we're going to do that, again, we're, we're going to to do get macro params. We have to parse out macro parameters, which is not hard. I just don't want to do it right now. Then what we need to do is, this is for storing it, we need to do now while not at end of file is the easiest thing to do. So while and what's the correct way to check if not at end of file? I'm probably going to say token kind, because our, our abstractions are falling apart. I'm going to have to do a refactor on this to get some better function names. While the token kind is not equal to uh, CTK EOF, and the token kind, we should never get here. So rather, we shouldn't, I'm going to make this a four, a while true, because I need to figure out what the condition is, basically. But what we're going to do is, once we've done this, and once we've done this, basically, we need to always now just start by reading without a preprocessor. Then if, I guess, token.kind is ctk um, eof or token kind is equal to ctk or the new line, rather, then we want to break. And I might even have a case for invalid, where we just stop reading the entire line. So if token kind is equal to CTK invalid, now we want to break, but also, well, now we just want to return and say, hey, we're not allowing anything invalid to slip through the macro system. Right. And it's already invalid, so it's already had an error reported for it. So that's fine with me. Break on the end of file or a new line. And that's good. So now all we have to do is, well, we have two things to do. The trivial thing to do is a vector push onto macro params the token, right? And we're going to copy the token so we don't have to do any copying ourselves. 
macro params is a string view. Oh, not params, body. Macro body, the token, copy the token. Before that, I think I want to keep track of if it's a macro argument in here, so I don't have to do additional lookups later, I can do it here. The problem just becomes now I have to look up the index, which is not hard, I guess. We're gonna wanna, we're gonna wanna do that anyway. If token kind is equal to TK, CTK, I didn't, I can't type sometimes. And we only need to do this if uh, macro has params. If it doesn't, then we don't have to do this at all. Then for long, long, i equals zero. i is less than a vector count. Vector count of macro params, i plus plus. Then we need to do a, a view compare thing, the thing that we've done before all the way somewhere. Why does this have token kind? I'm glad we scrolled up here because that should say zero. Do that for here as well. That would have been a bad assert. Uh, we want zero is equal to a thing. If zero is equal to a thing, do a thing and break. The thing we want to do is if the string value data of this token matches the... Oh, so now I'm going to need like the minimum length probably. Long, long, min, len. Or even I can just say if token string value length does not equal to macro params sub i dot length, then we just continue. So we don't have to worry about that. Then we can say token and um, this dot data like that. So if these are equal, then we want to mark it. So we're going to say token dot int value would work, actually. I was going to have a macro argument index, but I could just reuse the int value. That sounds stupid. I want to say um, macro param index equals i. So then we have to go into our token dot h and just add a new thing. Long, long, um, macro param index, which will be zero by default. Um, so we probably want to... either have a flag that says it's a macro parameter, or set it to negative one. But I like zero being initialized, so maybe we say plus one, which sounds stupid. We might just want to have a bool that says is macro param, which is going to be false in the macro parameter index. So then we can, that's not what I need to do, macro parameter index is fine, but token is macro param is not true, right? I think that makes sense. So now we've got a list of tokens, and we flagged any identifiers amongst them as parameters if they are. So then the only thing left to do is parse the parameter list all the way up here and construct the macro declaration down here. So we're going to do that last. Let's get the list of parameters here. And again, I have something that I think will work. We're going to do another ye olde do a four and check on the things here because we don't know what they are yet. We need to get the next token. And we're gonna go ahead and do something here. Same kind of deal. Let's copy a couple of these and reuse them. If it's invalid, we're gonna rely on the invalid um, message, basically. If it's EOF or the new line, we want to break, but we want to have an error message. The error message we want to have is expected that, actually. We need the, the closing parentheses there. So that's good. Perfect. We got the right thing. Then we need, if it's not, I'm going to copy this here. That's one too many. If the token kind is not an identifier, then it's not a valid parameter name. So now we want the message invalid token in macro parameter list. 
which it is. And for here, I might go ahead and say expected identifier to make it a little bit more clear. Um, we're fine with token, all of these having rather um, comments. So then we can do another ye oldie, make sure it's an identifier, get its name. So this is going to be macro parameter name. Now we can go ahead and vector push um, param names. Macro params. So I was like, hmm, interesting. Macro params param name. That should work just fine. Then well, we really don't even need to store it anywhere. We can just do that. Not a double copy. We love not double copy. So now we want to read the next token again, which is what we started doing up here, right? Read the next token. Here, read the next token. If it's a closed parentheses, then I'm going to add a third case to this too. So if it's not, if it is, if token, rather, God, I'm thinking, token kind is equal to a closed parentheses, we break, which will get handled by. We're in the wrong spot here. Um, we wanted to put this here. Break will put us down here. So I don't think we need to lex no preprocess here. That looks wrong. Because we're going to lex here. If we hit this break, we want to check what kind the token is. But then, else if token kind um, is not equal to a comma, so comma, thinking again, sorry. Thinking without talking, I should really be talking my thinks. We want to put an error here and skip to the end of the preprocessor. So we don't need the third case I was thinking of. We're going to put an error, we're going to skip to the end of the preprocessor, and we're going to return. So let's grab somewhere in here we have a skip, skip to the end of the preprocessor. Really, most of these should probably skip to the end of the preprocessor. Yeah, they should. Any big error should just, we're not checking anything else. So if it's not a comma, what we want here then is expected comma in macro parameter list. And we can update these locations with token location in most of these. That will be here as well. Token location. I left it at start location so that we knew we had a valid location, but in most cases, we really do just want to report on the token that is the problem, not on the start location here. So that, I'm now curious, what happens if we run this? Do we get a fuck ton of errors? Unknown type name, bool. Bool is macro program. We didn't include standard bool. Token dot h. Uh, include standard bool. And that should go directly to our custom header. Woo. Mm, okay, what about now? Okay. So back to here. We're failing on this assert. Which is strange. Because the only way we're supposed to get here is from here. So if, oh, if zero is equal to, not, I always forget the zero part. I added that in after the fact. Try it again. And hey, it does not error. We're not printing anything to prove that it works, but if we go look at the hello file, we have three different defines in here, and we did start printing defines. So that's good. If I say define 32, on line four, and we do that instead, that should give us macro name must be an identifier. So then, for some reason, that screws us over again. Shoot. But hey, we got macro name must be an identifier, so I've proved we're parsing things. Why are we getting an invalid character in source file? It's saying right here, which makes sense with the previous errors that we've had. But why are we having the same error again? Ah. Um, 
Oh, that's a problem. That's probably why. Anytime we lex to the end of a skip to the end of a preprocessor directive, we should reset this because it's we're returning out of things early. Does that fix the problem or are we dumb? Lexer is in preprocessor. Okay, so that changes something else. That assert fail could be a lot of places. So really, let me go update our assert macro here to say a couple of things. We want this, this, this. So then we've put the condition in here, but what we want is, well, I probably don't even need to have formats. Hold on. We can just um, this, 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 and we want uh, a file, line, we don't even need the column then, just file line, assert fail. So let's run this again, and I'll grab the, oh boy, didn't like that. Did not like that at all. Why did not it like that? But it's right there. It's right, it's right, it's right there. They're all the same. And there's a lot of them. Expected. The closing thing right here to match this opening thing right here. Oh, because line is, um, line is a, hold on. I said we didn't need to do this, but I think we do. I think we need to do that. So we're failing on Lexer C809. Back to the Lexer, go to 809. This is the one in particular that is failing. So I think anytime we hit this, we need to early return. What about now? 810. Um. So it's assuming something that is not true anymore. We're going to do this just in case, but really, I think every directive itself should assert that that's the case or something. At the very least, right, like, we don't really need to assert anything here. We do need to set this to false. But I think what we should do instead is assert that it's false, and we should require that every preprocessor directive does this. So if I go to include and define here, it's not going to get set at the bottom here. We should say lexer is in preprocessor is false here, and we should say the same thing here. But anytime we early return, we should also be hitting this, which sets it to false. So then, one final check we can do is when we're here, we want to make sure we're no longer in the preprocessor, which is happening here, so that's actually fine. What about now? Macro name must be an identifier, invalid character in source text. So we're not hitting this thing here. But where are we hitting it from? Right? So like, hold on. If I then say printf done with preprocessor directive new line. And we'll even give that a nice fancy thing here so we can see it more easily. We're done with the preprocessor directive after we get here. So something in here is causing us problems.
So I don't think it's in this function. I need to go to 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 to. to. So it's happening immediately after the macro name is invalid here. So macro name must be an identifier. We don't even need to advance in these because we're going to hit thing anyway. So in case of we hit EOF, we don't care at all. If in case of identifier, we want to read until we hit the end of whatever. Don't need to advance. And in doing so, when we hit here, once the kind is this, I think we then just want to call advance here. This might not be making a whole lot of sense. Too few arguments to call um, true. That is what I expected to happen, though, other than the fact that ident is wrong. The find and test2 are also wrong. It skips, so we don't really want to advance at all. That's correct. OK, the advance was just wrong. My badge. So let's get rid of this. We've now parsed and errored on all of these things. So we can go test some of our other errors here. I'm going to move that off to the side. If we go back to hello, we said define32 doesn't work. Define should not work either. Then we can do um, define test bad abc with no closing parentheses. We can do test bad two with ABC and no commas. Uh, and that's like the bulk of the ones I care about here. Macro name must be an identifier. Macro name must be an identifier in 5.9. That's this one. Macro name must be an identifier on 4.0 is here because we missed this one. So that's fine. So that's these two both reporting errors. This one didn't report the error. I would expect both of these to be errors, and yet they're not. So let's go, oh, that's not what I wanted. Let's work on those. The missing the parentheses and missing the commas. Both should cause issues. So, 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 so. How long have we been going for? A while. Yeah, if we're going to do includes in this episode, it's going to take a while. Because parsing, like, lexing and parsing includes without actually doing the expansion. Not that hard, probably. Same thing here. We're not doing macro expansion yet. We're just parsing macro declarations. Uh, but as soon as we need to expand anything, that's going to be the nightmare. We're going to have to do an entire, probably, I'm going to have to do a class on how to do that, which is not a fun. So like here, if we hit this, we break. And break takes us to here. If the token kind is not this, which it is in this case, but if we hit, so here we're breaking, but really we should be returning. Anytime we skip to the end, we should just return. So we really don't even, like this is very rarely going to get hit. I don't know if that... If token kind is equal to this, then we already read the next token here, so break just works. If we get to the end here, the only way to get to the end is by breaking or returning. And break is actually the only place that that happens. So why are we not seeing errors? All of these errors should be triggering. It's not invalid. If we're hitting a new line or an EOF, let me get this one. So let me go back to hello. Let me make a simpler example here. If I do hit the new line, or the, um, the end of file, Lexer at start of line is false. Well, that's not bueno. 
We've hit another bug. That's online. We don't even know. It's not going to tell us. So if I get rid of this one, that's going to be where it happens. If I put this back, we're still going to hit it. And the 197, uh, 197 is this one. Um, if we're not at the end of a file, if lexer current car is not equal to zero and lexer current is less than lexer um, end, and then we can do that assert. I think that gets rid of that assert, which is wrong, yes. Um, because there's nothing left to look at at the start of the line, I guess, because uh, we're going to hit the end of file. But the other stuff, does that still work? We're still not getting an error, which we should be getting. <sighs> Let's make sure... printf here one. Let's make sure we're even getting into this loop. We should be. We're not. We're never hitting this loop. printf um, when checking for macro params, where are we? c equals this. mod A. Why are we at A? After reading macro name, where are we? A. That might be another pause for debugging session. Why are we at A? That don't make no sense to me. Because if we come up here, when we read our macro name, we're hitting, nothing here looks weird, we're hitting our this case. And it's just going to keep going until this is false, which should happen if it's a opening parentheses, which I guess is the problem. So that means our current character, rather, is this. So we need to go back down here. And we need to check, not this, but we need to check if the current lexer current care is this, and if the um, it's immediately following. So and offset lexer cur minus lexer end. as an offset is equal to, well, see, lexer cur is not going to be right. It's going to be after. So let's say lyc location. Now location equals get location. Lexer. And current car location, that's what I was looking for. So we really care about this. So if current car location, that's why we introduced that minus text, that's our offset. I'm going to break this. Is equal to that 
then I guess at this point we can get a token. Um, read token number process lexer token. And that's fine. So then here, if this is equal to token dot location dot offset plus token location length. What about that? Expected a comma and macro parameter list. Assert fail at start of line. And we're back to at start of line. 597. 597. Here is the same thing as this one, I believe. So if that, try this again. Eh, not quite what I wanted, but that's fine. No, I did it again. This. Expected common macro parameter, parameter list, and we don't crash. So let's go back to hello, introduce our one that has commas but doesn't have the, the other thing, and then int main like that. Expected a comma, assert fail at start of line at 597 again. So it's failing here for sure. What the heck? 597 is still this one. Lexer at start of line. We could just manually set at start of line in this function, but I'm wondering why it's not working. Printf lexer current car. Now this is going to work. I have to do a string. Um, here equals mod c new line current character. We're at n. Um, why? It should be an i for int, right? It should be an i. So it worked for the first one, but definitely not for the second one. What the heck? So the case that we're hitting here, expected comma in macro parameter list. Expected comma in macro parameter list. We're advancing. We don't advance. What about that? Much better. OK. Gotta love bugs. Bugs, bugs, bugs. Um, I'm going to go back to hello, and we're going to make some valid defines again. Uh, define test, and we can make these nice big capital letters. Test value and test compute to be A plus 45, 35, sure. Those are both valid, should not give us any errors. Cool. Now we can. Do a git add dot git commit m uh, c add define parsing. I'm gonna put that in this and capitalize this because add define parsing. And you guys will see that soon. Nice. Okay, I'm gonna take another break and. We'll work on include next. Get myself nice and situated so I know what I'm doing. We're going to do an include directive next. Uh, we're not storing these macros just yet. I will put a to do there for that. To do local uh, store macro definitions in a translation unit. I just want them parsed for now. That's all I care about because I'm not using these in the test file just yet. We will want to expand macros to properly parse a C file, but since we're not parsing yet, I'm going to put off macro expansion until after we can get an error-free test file, basically. So that'll be either next episode or the episode after, depending on how this one goes. We'll worry about starting macro expansion and include expansion. Oh, because there's going to be some problems with include as well.
not major problems, but still problems nonetheless. Um, we could turn, actually, I don't know if the standard would do something that would prohibit this happening, but we could pretend that um, include is a macro expansion. So we could parse and include lex a C header file and then push it as a macro expansion so that it reads from there first. That might be kind of cool. So we might actually implement macro expansion first and then try to tack on include expansion in the same system. That would be nice. Okay, I'm gonna leave it there, come back to include directives. We're gonna try to make this one a longer episode and see if you guys like it. Include directives will be when I come back and I'm not sleepy. So I'm back, I said I wouldn't be sleepy, I'm still sleepy, but I have food. And we're going to do include directives. I didn't think about how to do this <clears throat> while I was gone, so I'm going to go with whatever my last um, my last thoughts were, which is <clears throat> we need to probably just check if so. Like first off, let me refresh myself on the semantics here. <clears throat> We've got this, so we're, that's reading the define. So we're going to want to read the include okay so we're probably just going to check if the next character is a valid no we're going to try to read a token but we need to like put a state that says that because, okay, there's a couple ways I could do this, and I'm like, sorry, I'm not saying what I'm thinking here. Brain work mysterious ways. So we can just read the next token, which will give us regular strings, but it won't give us angle bracket strings. Or, and there's a problem with angle bracket strings anyway, because they can accept comments. So if I'm parsing an angle bracket string, I have to also look out for comments, which is interesting. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Let me go check my notes, and I'll pull up my notes so that you guys can see what I'm looking at. Over here somewhere in my last attempt here that I didn't really enjoy is remove all comments as they're encountered. This is more formally replayable by a single space. Yep, that's why we're doing that. They're allowed to contain new lines and split a preprocessor directive across multiple lines. If a preprocessor is parsed as so a comment, Takes the left of the case, stops parsing the preprocess directive. <clears throat> okay. An exception to this rule is include directive with these two. That means specifically that a comment is not recognized within the quoted, quoted portion. <clears throat> huh? <clears throat> <clears throat> a comment is not recognized while within the quoted portion. Wait a second. <clears throat> That's like the opposite of what I was thinking. So does that mean the preprocessor can have comments in its regular quoted strings? What the heck? Hold on. Um, <clears throat> I think I was reading the GNU docs made here. So preprocessing directives, let's see. C comments and predefined macro names are not recognized inside an include directive in which the file name is delimited with these. Okay. Never recognized within a character or string constant. Okay, so they're just never recognized regardless. I think I read this and was like, oh, so if it is a string in an include, then, so that just never made sense, but I wrote it down. So this just means we need to read it like a string. Um, I think, though, that these don't have escapes, maybe? It's very good for system header files. For sure. Okay.
This may be where I got that then. Hold on. This figure file. Okay, so backslashes work in here. Do they work up here? Is that only a special case there? I I don't know much about it. Computed includes either. Sorry, I'm not reading out loud. I'm not used to reading out loud. Let me make this bigger so you can see what I'm reading, though. That is something I should have done before. <coughs> so these are going to be handled very similarly. This one, this is the only delimiter we care about. It can contain stuff. So there's no such thing as comments in there. Here, current directory, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Cannot contain this character. That's fine. Backslashes work in here. I assume they work in here, too, even though it doesn't say so. Uh, and then anything else here is the computed include, which I don't know much about. Any include directive whose argument does not fit the above two forms is a computed include. The text, anything else, is checked for macro calls, which are expanded. When this is done, the result must fit one of the above two variants. In particular, the expanded text must be, must end, must in the end be surrounded by either quotes or angle braces. This feature allows you to define a macro which controls blah blah blah. So we're probably not going to support these right away. We'll probably error and say, hey, computed include is not supported right now. Uh, and I'll have to learn better how they work. Uh, I know roughly how include works here. There's a little bit more information here for like how to implement an include or what it does. We might reference this or go find like an actual standard file because I've never read the official standard. I should probably go do that at some point. Uh, I know a bit about it from just reading other people talk about the standard, but I've never read the full standard on my own, uh, which we're going to need to do to fully implement a C compiler. But that is beside the point. So this is nonsense. We're not going to think about that anymore. So over here, we're probably going to have to add a lexer flag for the to make this as easy as possible. We can refactor this out later. Let's go into the lexer, and if we're in the preprocessor, we can also say is in include. <clears throat> so if we read, <clears throat> well, let's let's just call it expect. Um, ooh, because when we, I mean, when we get around to the computed include, we're going to have to do a lot of refactoring anyway, I'm expecting. So computed includes are going to make this more complicated than I want. Like, I'm, I'm curious here. Let's, let's try to use this file as an example. If I come up here and I say include test. It's going to error that test doesn't expand, I assume, right? Expected a file name, yep. But if I do expect like this, then it's going to be, hey, we need to close this. Expected a file name, but it's, it's really going to, like, it's trying to read farther, I think. Um, it might be more obvious, maybe, if I do test like this, because it's still trying to parse a string here, but... Okay, so if we're in the preprocessor and we're in an include, it just looks like less than and greater than are treated as quotes regardless. So we will have an is in include um, for now. And we'll worry about refactoring that out later. So is in include here. If we're in an include, we're going to do it after we read the token. No, I don't need to do that. That's right, I don't need to do this. Um, is in include equals true, and then no matter what we do here, I'm going to set is include to false, which is going to happen down here as well. So that's the easiest way I can think to do that. So then we do want to read a read token, no preprocess, from the lexer into the token. And this time, we're expecting it to be a string literal. We need to know what kind of string literal. 
Um, so that'll probably have to go on the token for our purposes here, token.h. Add a new flag here. Um, is macro param uh, is angle string, maybe? So if we're in the preprocessor and we're in an include here, then we can do a second kind of string parsing where, so here, let's not make it a new function yet. Um, I'm going to do kind of a scary thing. And again, we can refactor this later, but I'm just trying to see if we've got the right idea here. So we want to have a parse string literal here. And what we want to do here is we want to say car end delimiter equals lexer current car is equal to a quote, and it's going to be a close quote. Otherwise, it's going to be the greater than. So then down here, instead of checking for this, we want to check for the end delimiter. Missing closing quote is fine. And then it's going to do stuff. And then if we are in the preprocessor, we can come over here and say, if it's this and we're not in a preprocessor include, so not lexer in include, then we're going to do an escape sequence. Otherwise, it's just going to append the character. So what about that? Now what we can do is find our case for less than. And before we do this, we can say if lexer in include go to um, string literal. I doesn't give me. I forgot what I called it already. Parse string literal. I should call it lex string literal. That's a bit more accurate. That should give us angle strings, and it should disable escaping while we are in uh, the include directive. So then, what we can do here. Like, what if I just come up here and say ASDF, or just something, right? What does that do? Does it just ignore everything? It's not It's not complaining. So I might do the same. I might just not complain. Let's come down here. We're going to read this, and then we can also just skip to the end, this style. So if... Um, for right now, let's just say if token kind is not equal to ctk string literal, then um, then we can issue an error, and we're going to end up skipping everything anyway. So for right now, this is fine. Uh, expected file path or something. Let's go. What did it? Yeah. Uh, I can just put one here. Include test, and it should tell me uh, expected a file. Sure. Expected a file name. Works for me. I'm going to go through all of my things here and make sure I've got the same casing eventually. Uh, I think I like lower casing everything for now. And we can worry about everything else later. Cool. So that is not a bad start. And if we're, if we're ending with this, then we're good. So even better here, what we can do is say if token kind is equal to um, the new line, then we can definitely put this error here. If it's equal to the new line, we're going to do this, then I'm going to do this, then we're going to return. Easy as. Otherwise, if it's equal to a string, we're not going to throw an error. We're just going to basically do this in return. So if it's not equal to a string, that's where we're going to want something else to happen, where we do the computed, computed include. So I'm going to leave the block here. Uh, I just wanted to separate this because this is going to be a we have nothing left to parse. We're just going to stop. Um, but then here's where we're going to want to do some extra work to parse the remaining tokens and have that get turned into something. Uh, and then best case scenario here, 
nothing happens. We skip to the end. We need to now to do um, process the include, which we can do by let's come up here and say ISC string view <coughs> uh, include path equals zero by default probably. Um, what I can do to be a little sane is say length is zero, but data is an empty string, so that at least we're not accidentally dereferencing a null pointer, even though we really should be checking that anyway. So then, uh, hmm. parse the include. So. Let's say if it is this, then else that. Then here we can just say the include path length, uh, the include path equals token string value. Otherwise, we error, and we've already got a default value here. Cool. So let's just does that parse. If I go to my hello, <coughs> so we could say include test, include test and include test like that those are decent tests all right my nose is itchy itchy as fuck so then we're going to run test hello it doesn't like some of the things we've done uh use some undeclared and delim that's right lexer and delim well that doesn't make sense 434, expected expression. Oh, because I need a this. Right, that's not supported in some versions of C. What about now? Expected a final name on line 3. That doesn't sound bad. So let's go back to hello, and we can add a few more tokens here. If I do test like that, expected a file name. If I do test like this, then we're not reporting it as an error. That's fine. <clears throat> uh, same thing for the, the other string, just to be sure. It looks fine to me. I think we've done it. Let's throw in some slashes, ASDF, backslash test or something in the middle here. Throw a backslash test in there. Throw a line comment start. I don't know. Expected a file name. Beautiful. OK, so we are parsing, but not doing anything with yet both of those, which is great. I'm going to leave them all in here so we still have something to work with and get that committed. That is not what I wanted to click. Um, yeah, I will leave that one here. This is probably, what, like an hour and a half or something episode. We're going to get that all pushed, and the next episode we can start actually processing this data, storing it somewhere, and trying to do some expansions. And when we do, we'll be able to start uh, attempting to, not succeeding at for a little while, but attempting to parse some of our actual source files here. And once, once we can do that, well, lex, let's say, once we can lex those files, we are like not home free, but we've done the first step. Uh, being a standards compliant C compiler is going to take time, and being an extensions compliant, uh, you know, like GNU extensions, Windows extensions, is going to take even longer. But if we can if we can self lex, I'll be happy. For now, the goal is again some kind of compliant equal to ish other compilers. We're not going to be the most efficient compiler in the world, but like uh, a one man compiler can still exist hopefully. So we'll get to that next episode. Thanks for watching. Uh, check the description for links to the source code. I still haven't put it up on GitHub yet, but it's on my personal uh, Git instance. I should probably put it on GitHub so it's easier for people to. Uh, to fork it, to do whatever they want with it. Um, I'm also going to put a link to the playlist. I've started putting these in playlists. You'll see Discord links to my Discord I'm trying to build up, as well as the friends who got me back into doing all this stuff. So check out at least one of those, please. One, one or two, I don't know. And I'll see you next time, I guess. <laughs>